Those in the sanctuary today, if you have your Bibles, 2 Kings, the book of 2 Kings chapter number 13 is where we're going to be this morning. Hallelujah. How many is ready for the word today? Amen. I pray that we are. I am, uh, we, uh, we rode 19 hours in a car to try to be here today. We got here, got home 6.30, I think, 6 o'clock yesterday morning. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, so, but uh, we are somewhat rested and we'll do our best this morning to deliver to you uh, what the Lord has. So Second Kings chapter number 13, beginning in verse number 14, going to read down through verse number 19 together. Maybe a familiar passage of scripture for some in this room, others maybe not so much, uh, but l please do not let, if you are familiar, please do not let the familiarity of this passage uh, keep you from hearing what the Lord would say to us today. So beginning in verse number 14, 2 Kings chapter 13, it says, now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died. It gets better from here, I promise, okay? And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it, and Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, open the window eastward, and he opened it. And then Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the, spirit, the Syrians in Aphek, till thou have consumed them. And he said, take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote three times, and then he stayed. But then the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou should have smitten five or six times. Then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hadst consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. Let us pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the privilege to stand before your people one more time. Now I'm asking today, Lord, for you to do what only you can do. Anoint this vessel with a fresh anointing. Let me not speak my opinion, but Lord, let me speak your word with the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we'll give you praise and glory for it. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for honoring the word this morning. 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 14 through 19 is where we find our text this morning. And you find that in this passage that the man of God, the prophetic voice of God, comes and begins to give instructions. How many knows that prophetic instructions are important this morning? But for the Lord, if the Lord would help us for a few moments, I want to minister along these lines today. And I believe that it's something we must hear. If the Lord would help me today, I want to talk to you about a desire to consume a desire to consume. We find in the latter part of this passage that we read together, in verse number 19, it says, the man of God was wroth with him and said, thou should have smitten five or six times. Then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. Can I tell you, today we need a desire. We find today that this is an hour that is very crucial. I want to give you a story as I get ready to lay a foundation. Some of you may think this is a bizarre story, but it is a story that is recorded in history. In the year 334 BC, the Alexander the Great landed his forces on the shore of what was then known as the Great Empire of Persia. He was faced with what appeared to be an impossible task. So in order to increase the odds of success, he did something very dramatic. He did something that many would even consider to be very wild or even maddening today. But he simply removed the option of 
retreat. And this is what he did. Upon landing the boats on the shore of enemy territory, he turned to his men, and this is what he said. He said, burn the boats. This seems bizarre for most common thinking. But we find that he was consumed with the desire to overcome his adversary. Either they would fight and win or they would fight till they died. That is exactly what he did. History records that they set fire to the very boats that they landed up on the territory with. But it says that they fought and they overcome unbelievable odds and they won. How and why is because there was a man that had a desire to consume his enemy. The word consume simply means this, to completely or to utterly destroy. Here is one of the things that I'm finding in all of my travels and in all of my interactions with people is this. There is a lack of a desire to consume. We have become so indoctrinated And we have been led to believe that things are not really that important. But I'm going to say to you today very clearly and without hesitation, things are important. What you allow to be present in your life will dictate not just your present, but it will also dictate your future. And when you and I become comfortable with sin... When we become comfortable with darkness, when we become comfortable with all of the things that the world is presenting, it does not take us long to begin to lose the desire to consume them and we learn how to basically get comfortable with them. Please hear me this morning. Notice Alexander the Great removed every option of retreat and therefore his men had to go head forward and consume that which was present or it would consume them. I want to say to you this morning, if you and I do not begin in the United States of America as well as other nations of the world as people of faith, if we do not once again recover our desire to consume that which is evil, it is just a matter of time until it will consume us. Because, can I tell you, the word of the Lord teaches us this. A tree cannot bear good fruit and evil fruit at the same time. It is either good or it is evil. It is either glorifying God or it is not. I don't care how much we have come to a place where we think that we have received ultimate knowledge or revelation. If it does not line up with the word of God, it does not need to be present in our life. Currently, we are dealing with a lack of understanding of the importance as well as a lack of appetite to engage the enemy of our day. Can I tell you, the Bible has not changed, nor will it. But we find that New Testament scripture tells us that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities and powers, evils of darkness. Can I tell you, that has not changed. So therefore, there must be a desire to consume that which is evil. Or it will consume you and I. Much like in the hour of our text we find ourselves, I sincerely believe this morning in a time of prophetic instruction that cannot be ignored. So today, my, my, at the very onset of my time with you, this is what I want to say to you. I pray that we will awaken and that we will burn our boats and that we will win this battle. With that being said, I want to take us on a journey today into this story. Maybe a story that you're familiar with. But Elisha, the man of God, he is finding himself at the end of his life. He is getting ready to exit this planet and step into eternity. And the voice that had led and had been guiding Israel for an extended period of time was about to become silent. The one that had given counsel would no longer be able to speak to the events of the day. Knowing the time was approaching, Joash, the king of Israel, came to where he was. Even though he did not have a desire to walk in this commandments and the statues of God, he understood the importance 
of the prophetic instruction and insight that had been given to Israel through the prophet of God. And therefore, that is where we picked up our reading today. And upon his arrival, he comes in to the prophet and he begins to weep over him. But notice the word of the Lord begins to be speaking through this man one more time. We know the leaders of Israel had rebelled and had ignored the directions and the commandments. However, one last time, God was going to speak through this prophetic voice of Elisha. And we see in his physical weakness, Elisha began to operate in spiritual authority. I may be standing before you today weak in body and limited in body. But today I can stand before you knowing this, that because of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, I can speak to you with spiritual authority today. And that is this, we need to hear the voice of God. Can I say to you today in 2 Kings 13 and 15, Elisha said, as he came in, he said, I need you to take the bow and I need you to take the arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And notice in verse 16, it says to the king of Israel, he said, now put your hand up on the bow. And then he took his hand and put his hands over him. And then he said, I want you to shoot this arrow. But notice with me. This was not just any arrow, but in verse number 17, it tells us that it was the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek, and then thou shalt consume them. Now, don't miss what we just read because verse number 17, the prophetic word was, listen, this is the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, but it is also a very specific arrow. It is the arrow of deliverance from Syria, and therefore you shall utterly destroy them. But notice with me, just because there is a word given does not mean that that word is going to just form itself and complete itself. There has to be a desire for the word that is spoken. And we find that the king, Joash, he takes that bow, he takes that arrow, he shoots that first arrow. And then as he does, he is then instructed. After he's given instructions of saying, this is what this is about. This is what it is really concerning. And then he says, now I need you to take those arrows and I need you to begin to shoot those arrows. And he shot three times and then he stayed. You say, well, that's wonderful. But the reality is of the day, in that moment of time, what he was showing was a lack of desire to consume. He did not have an appetite for the fight, if you will. Because of the simple fact, it's not in our culture today, but in the culture of this hour, it was something. When you was going to go to battle, when you was going to engage in warfare or conflict with your enemy, it was something that you would do. You would send someone out with a bow and an arrow, and you would rear back and you would release that bow and arrow and he would shoot arrows in the direction of your adversary and it was sending a message the message was that we are coming and we are going to consume you and we find that the more arrows that you shot the stronger your testimony or of your courage was and we find that the word of the Lord in this passage shows us that the king of Israel even though he was faced with opposition even though there was an adversary in front of him even though there was an enemy that wanted to utterly destroy him and his people and his kingdom he did not have the appetite to, to take a bow and arrow and begin to sling the arrows in the face of the enemy because of his lack of confidence uh, because of his lack of understanding of the hour and can I tell you we have a lot of men and women today if we're not careful we will hear a word and say well God spoke it and that's all that matters uh, but I need you to understand with me today there is a real devil uh, with a real kingdom of darkness uh, that wants to destroy you your marriage your children your family and everything about you uh, and he is not concerned that the word is in written form and he is not even concerned that it is in verbal form at times uh, but what he is concerned about is if a man or a woman will believe that word uh, and then will act according to that word uh, and today listen uh, we're preached to death. Uh, we're conferenced to death. Uh, we're revival meetings to death. Uh, we, 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 we do all kinds of stuff, uh, but yet it does us no 
good uh, because of the simple fact uh, we don't have a desire uh, to consume the enemy. Uh, and can I tell you this morning, uh, if you ain't careful, you'll spend another week like you did last week and the week before that and the week before that, uh, and you'll blame the preacher, you'll blame the singer, you'll blame the evangelist, you'll blame the prophet, uh, you'll blame the big bad devil, uh, you'll blame everybody and everything, but not take any personal responsibility. Uh, but I come to tell you today, uh, God has given us every tool that we need uh, to walk in victory, to walk in power, and to walk with authority. Uh, and you and I need to understand uh, that he has equipped us uh, for the hour and the season in which we live. Uh, and just like in this day, uh, in our day, we find that the word of the Lord is still more than enough. Uh, can I tell you this morning, uh, I need to remind you uh, that our God, uh, tell your neighbor, say our God, uh, our God is a consuming fire, uh, according to Hebrews 12 and 29. Uh, so no matter what may come your way, uh, no matter what you may have to deal with, uh, you can stand with confidence and know uh, that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Uh, but however, uh, in order for that to be true in my life, uh, I have to take up the prophetic word of God uh, and I have to say, what does it mean? Uh, what does it apply to me? Uh, it's not just that there's a word out there. Uh, but I have to have a desire uh, to say, you know what? When the enemy comes against my family, uh, I have a desire to raise up a standard against him that he can't consume me. Uh, listen, that's not based on feeling. Uh, that's not based on the circumstance of the hour, but it's based upon the word of God. Uh, the word says that if you'll by faith uh, raise up a standard against him, uh, then he has to flee. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, if we're not careful today, uh, we got a whole shift of... Uh, the sheep of arrows uh, that we never use. Uh, and we're sitting there wondering why the enemy is always uh, making inroads in our life. Uh, but Elisha said uh, to the king of Israel, he said, listen, uh, I want to bring a prophetic clarity to you. Uh, this arrow right here, uh, it is the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Uh, there is nothing more powerful than it. Uh, there is nothing that can overcome it. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, you have to release the arrow of deliverance in your life uh, and therefore he said uh, he said I want you to put it in the bow uh, so he take it uh, I got a bow around here somewhere I don't, there it is uh, and we find that he said don't get nervous I won't shoot you on purpose it might on accident uh, but he simply took it uh, and he says now uh, I need you to do something uh, but listen it's just not any arrow uh, and it's not just any bow uh, but he says listen uh, this is the arrow of the Lord's deliverance uh, and he says I'm not even going to make you do it by yourself. Uh, he says, I know, but maybe you're a little uncomfortable with it. Uh, but he says, get it and put it in your hand. Uh, get this, uh, an old man, uh, an old man that is getting ready uh, to leave this world. Uh, he is in a state of weakness uh, by the world's standard. Uh, don't really have much to offer. Uh, but we find that a king uh, in all of his authority uh, finds himself. Uh, Brother Austin, come and help me for a moment moment. Uh, they, 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 they learn better with pictures. Uh, I've learned uh, oh, through the years. Uh, we find that he simply says, I need you to take this, uh, the arrow of deliverance, uh, the Lord's deliverance, uh, and I need you to take this and put it in your hand. Uh, and now I need you to open up the window eastward. Uh, this is east that way, so I'll help you out. And we find uh, that after it's opened, uh, this old man, uh, he simply comes and he says, listen, uh, I'm going to put my hand upon your hand. Uh, now notice what happens. Uh, a king uh, in his authority is now wrapped in the authority of God. Uh, and we find that the prophetic anointing uh, is about to be attached to the Lord's uh, arrow of deliverance. Uh, and when it is shot, uh, we find that it comes over here. And now uh, it's laying over there there. Uh, it sent a message towards the enemy. Uh, listen, when he looked out and he saw on the horizon, what is that? Uh, there's an arrow in the ground. Uh-oh, somebody saying uh, they're not going to take what we're bringing laying down. Uh, but listen, uh, that's one arrow. But now uh, the man of God says, listen, uh, 
take the arrows. Uh, and we find that the king, uh, he takes one uh, and he says, all right, I believe what the prophet says. Uh, so now he shoots one uh, and he shoots two uh, and he shoots three. But now uh, we find that the enemy looks and he sees them and says, all right, uh, they're ready for battle. Uh, now we may have some opposition. Uh, we may have some difficulty. Uh, it's not going to be as easy as we thought. Uh, but they said, you know what? We're going to keep fighting. Uh, why are they going to keep fighting? Uh, it's because there was not a message sent uh, because they realized this. Uh, yes, there's going to be some opposition, uh, but they don't really have a desire to consume us uh, because there's only three arrows on the ground. Uh, but notice what happens. Uh, Elisha said, uh, and he says he was wroth. Uh, I mean, he was angry. Uh, he said, you know what? Uh, he said, you just missed an opportunity. Uh, you're going to push darkness back, uh, but you're not going to consume darkness. Uh, because you did not grab a hold of the prophetic utterance that God gave. And he said, if you would have, if you would have shot five or six arrows, when the enemy would have looked eastward over there, and he'd have looked and seen all of them in the ground, and said, listen, we can't go there because there is a desire to consume us. Thank you, Austin. And can I tell you today, what's happening in our world in this moment of time is is very simple. Uh, the enemy is looking towards the church uh, and he sees there's no desire. Uh, there's no opposition. Uh, oh, there might be an arrow of the Lord's deliverance, uh, but listen, uh, it does not operate by itself. Uh, somebody got to operate in faith. Uh, somebody's got to get an appetite. Uh, somebody's got to take a stand. Uh, somebody's got to engage. Uh, I'm here to tell you today, uh, if you or I uh, do not grab a hold of this thing and realize uh, that we're in the fight of our life. Uh, yes, our victory was won at Calvary, uh, but can I tell you, uh, he still says, uh, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, you and I need to understand, uh, if we're going to stand, we got to stand now. Uh, there's a nation hanging in the balance, uh, which means your family's hanging in the balance, uh, which means your children and your children's children's hanging in the balance, uh, which means uh, that the church uh, has a responsibility this morning. Please hear me. Elisha, in his final moments, sees a lack of desire. And he says, if you would have, if you would have shot five or six times, you would not just have pushed it back, but you would have utterly consumed the Syrians. I'm going to tell you something right now. Darkness is making a push like it never has. It should not surprise us. The word of the Lord tells us of that. That in the last days, there would be gross darkness. There would be a push. But in the midst of the pushing, there has to be a raising up of resistance. And can I tell you, we should not be alarmed by the darkness. But we should understand today that we are in a place where we have been given a responsibility to raise up the standard. You say, but preacher, this and that, listen, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, please don't miss this, is his word. And this is what I need to remind you about his word. Jeremiah 23 and 29 says, is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Now, you missed a good place to shout right there. Because can I tell you, his word is still a consuming fire. And it is still like a hammer that is able to break a rock into pieces. What are you talking about? What I'm saying to you and I this morning is this. We are in a place right now where there has a lot of stuff going on, but there is an absence of his word in operation in our lives. I was sharing with some recently, but I am stirred in my spirit today greater than in any time in recent history concerning the lack of desire for his word. We're looking for somebody to give it to us easy 
and quick without any labor, without any toil, without any prayer, without it costing us anything. But please hear me. Fads come and go. Things come and go. But his word will remain. And if this word is not settled in your heart, if this word is not a part of your life, please hear me. You are fooling yourself. Men have tried many things. And I'm disturbed by some things and some things I some things and some things I see are not necessarily bad things. I said and I listened, but I said and I listened even in recent days. We're always trying to make it we're always trying to make it better. How many wants it all to be better? There's nothing wrong with wanting it better. But I'm going to tell you something. It can only really truly be better if God is building the house. Men come up with all kinds of things. I listened to a gentleman say this, and his heart is pure. He said, I watched my father build a church from 100 people to 8,000. And he said, I watched it nearly kill my dad and kill us as kids and as a family. And great guy. So he says this, I'm going to make it better. I can appreciate that. But he's created this whole thing. He says, I need to create an atmosphere for men of God where they don't have to labor so much. Sounds good, right? I, I need to create this system where they can spend time caring for their people or caring for their family where they don't have to be nailed to a desk or they have, don't have to labor so much to get a message. Sounds good, right? And he has a beautiful program. Not knocking the program. Successful program. It's better. But my question is, is it better? Because of the simple fact, can I tell you something today? There is some things that you just can't have a shortcut to. There's some things you have to labor for. There's some things... You have to lay between the porch and the altar to receive. Listen, you cannot lead people to a spiritual place unless first you have walked that path to get there. There's some things that you have to labor. Listen, I appreciate resources. I use resources. Listen, I appreciate the, listen, I got, I'm reading like four books at one time right now. That's why I'm so messed up in my head. Maybe I don't know. But I, I, I continually are trying to learn something. And I'm, a, I'm appreciative of revelation and knowledge. But at the same time, can I tell you, there is no substitute for a man or a woman to get along with God and sit at his table and eat his word and let it speak to your heart and then bring that and present it in the manner where it's anointed. Because can I tell you, there is no substitute for the anointing. But there has to be a desire to consume the enemy. Can I tell you today, and this may sound critical and I do not mean for it to. I'm just making an observation. There is many individuals sitting in the houses of worship across our nation. Hearing a message today, right now, that a man of God or a woman of God did not labor over. It was something that was prepared for them because they took the easy way out because they did not have a desire to consume the enemy. There has to be a desire to consume. And the prophetic instruction is this, just like it was given to the king of Israel at that time, was this, listen, you have to realize there's something on the horizon that's getting ready to take your freedom, take your joy, take your family into bondage. Now, you can take a pretty message and you can move a crowd, 
but if it's not a prophetic message, if it's not a message for the hour, can I tell you, I can go back and listen to some of the most anointed messages from 1990, 1980, even in the early 2000s, but it's not the message for today. It sounds good, it preaches good, but it's not the message for today because the hour has changed and the enemy is fighting on a different field than he was then. And therefore, I can preach that if I want to. Uh, I'm not saying that's wrong per se in the right setting, but if I need fresh manna today so that you can have strength to fight today, can I tell you, I got to have a desire to consume that which is on the horizon. Uh, and can I tell you, if we're not careful, the enemy is making inroads in the American church like never before because of the simple fact there is no arrows in the ground. And if you're not careful, he's walking in and out of your life every day of the week because there's no arrows in your ground. So I come with a very simple message today. I come to tell you that there has to be once again a desire like Alexander the Great had in 334 B.C. when he says, listen, uh, there is no other option. We must fight and we must win. So therefore, we are going to burn our boats. You say, you're a radical preacher. Yes, I am. Because of the simple fact, I am tired of hearing and seeing another 30-year-old, another 20-year-old, another 40-year-old uh, leave this world bound by darkness uh, while they sit in the house of God week after week, month after month, year after year. Can I tell you, I don't like it when I see Facebook memories pop up uh, with people that are no longer present in this house uh, or in my life, uh, even though uh, we seen and we labored, uh, but I was like, God, uh, and even last night in the wee hours, I said, God, uh, I got to shoot more arrows uh, because I got to let the enemy know, uh, not on my watch, not in this hour, not in this time, uh, I'm not just going to shoot three things, uh, but I'm going to empty my quiver, uh, and I am going to let the enemy know uh, that today is the day uh, where we raise up a standard against him, uh, and we stand and say this, uh, it is the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, yes, uh, but that arrow has to go into my bow uh, which is a picture of faith uh, can I tell you uh, without faith it is impossible to please God uh, without faith it is able to walk in victory uh, but if I've got enough faith uh, to put his arrow uh, in my bow uh, and I send a message to the darkness of this world uh, I can stand with confidence and know uh, that this weapon uh, that is coming against me uh, is not more powerful than the weapon of his word uh, and therefore I can stand with confidence confidence this morning. Uh, while you sit there, I'm going to preach just for a moment so I'll feel better. Uh, because can I tell you, uh, we have got to break the mold of religiosity. Uh, we got to break the mold of comfortable Christianity. Uh, we got to break the mold of just coming to what America says is what it's supposed to be. Uh, but we got to get back to where once again uh, there is a fresh anointing of Pentecost, uh, not just in this house, uh, but in your house uh, where your children uh, are covered uh, and saturated uh, by the power of Pentecost once again. Uh, listen, uh, it's time for you to get your song back. Uh, it's time for you to get your dance back. Uh, but there is no song uh, and there is no dance uh, until first of all you put the Lord's arrow in your bow uh, and begin to tell the enemy, uh, no longer, not today. A desire to consume. Please hear me. I'm hurrying we will not just drive back the enemy, but when we put the arrow of the Lord's deliverance in a bow and we begin to fire those arrows continually, we are sending the message that we will consume him. And can I tell you today, when you and I understand the significance of this, it changes everything. What must have went through the minds of the adversaries of Alexander the Great. They see these boats coming into their territory. Who do they think they are? What do they think they're going to do? But then in a little while, they look back and say, what in the world are those crazy people doing? They're not planning on leaving because they don't have no means to leave. They're burning their bones. They must plan on staying. 
It reminds me of David and his men coming back to Ziglag and they see everything is in shambles. The smell of smoke is in the air. Hot embers are still on the ground. All of a sudden, David says, bring me the ephod. He encouraged themselves in the Lord. And he said, Lord, I don't know what to do, but Lord, should I pursue? And the Lord said this, pursue, and you shall recover all. Cover all. Now, you know that story. He has 600 men with him. 200, they make it to the brook. And they're so weak. He says, you stay by the stuff. David and 400 men keep going. They go on down. They see a vast army in front of them. They see their spoil all over the fields in front of them. It looked like it was impossible. But David was holding on to something. He was holding on to a prophetic word. Listen, let me show you the difference. We find that the king of Israel at this time in 2 Kings 13, he took an arrow and he shot it three times. Then he stayed. He didn't have a desire to consume. He didn't realize what was on the table, so to speak, if you will. But David, after seeing all the destruction, after getting that smell in his nostrils, understanding that, you know what, not only did everything get burned, not only did everything get burnt, but my children are in captivity. My wives are in captivity. I wish you could see to God today, right now, how much captivity is all around you. Listen, uh, it's not about how pretty you shout in here. It's not about how, what kind of emotions we have. But the reality is uh, that all around you, captivity, men and women you can't see it right now but when you walk out of this place today maybe even sitting in this room if you could see in the spiritual realm there is men with chains on their arms and on their feet Uh, there is chains on their mind Uh, there's chains all about them Uh, and they come in they got a smile on but yet at the same time uh, there is no real freedom Uh, there is no real peace Uh, there is no real joy Uh, can I tell you today uh, we got to have a desire to break free from this stuff Uh, listen uh, I'm not here because I want to preach this morning. No, no, no. I'm here because of the simple fact that there's something in my spirit pushing that says you got to keep going. Uh, You got to keep pushing. Uh, You got to keep doing what I called you to do. Uh, It's not time to quit. It's not time to back up. Uh, Listen, uh, it's not based on feelings. Uh, It's not based on any of those things, Uh, but it's about understanding the hour. David got a prophetic word from God uh, when he was wrapped in that ephod, uh, and he simply said, thou shall pursue and recover all. Uh, He said, you know what? I'm going to grab a hold of that word uh, and I'm going to walk that word out in my life. Uh, So even though they only had 400 men with him, uh, even though he had an army in front of him spread out and all of his spoil, his family's in captivity, he engaged in the battle uh, and notice what he did. He recovered all. Uh, Can I tell you, even when it looks impossible, uh, when you're with God, it's not impossible. Uh, But when you got a arrow of the Lord's deliverance uh, in your bow that is called faith uh, and you begin to operate operate in that realm, uh, you begin to take back things that the enemy stole from you. Uh, Listen, uh, you and I find ourselves today in a time in history uh, where we must awaken to this reality uh, that there has got to be a standard raised against the enemy. Uh, He can no longer have free access into your life, uh, into your family, uh, into the ministry, uh, and into your community, into your state, and into your nation. Uh, But if God would raise up a man, uh, if he would raise up a woman uh, that would once again hear the prophetic instruction uh, and say, you know what, I'm going to put my hands to it uh, and I'm not going to let go of it. Uh, I'm not going to quit shooting uh, until my quiver is empty. Uh, And when he does that, uh, then there's a message. uh, And can I tell you, when our faith uh, is joined with his word, uh, it becomes an impossible, unbreakable uh, union uh, that the enemy cannot uh, and never will uh, be able able to triumph Uh, and can I tell you the same God of yesterday uh, is the same God of today Uh, the one that got grandma victory uh, and great grandma victory uh, is the same God that will get you victory Uh, but you're going to have to pick up the arrows uh, and you're going to have to begin to shoot them and say uh, that I am decreeing and declaring uh, that I am engaging in spiritual warfare uh, against the enemy Uh, I know this isn't popular uh, and some of you may not even be getting it but that's all right. Uh, I'm going to believe that the Holy Ghost uh, will get down into your spirit uh, and make you so uncomfortable uh, in your place of comfortability uh, that you say, 
you know what? This just don't fit anymore. Uh, I got to do something. Uh, I'm here to tell you what you got to do. Uh, you got to begin to have a desire uh, to say, you know what? I am tired of darkness on every corner. Uh, I am tired uh, of seeing darkness here and darkness there. Uh, I'm tired of seeing it and I have no opposition. Uh, I think I will just by faith uh, take my quiver of arrows uh, and begin to shoot in that direction. Uh, and every time I shoot, I'll say in the name of Jesus, be delivered. Uh, in the name of Jesus, be set free. Uh, in the name of Jesus, let healing come. Uh, in the name of Jesus, let revival fire fall. Uh, in the name of Jesus, let there be a song. Uh, in the name of Jesus, let there be a dance. Uh, let there be an awakening. Uh, can I have anybody in the house today that understands uh, that this cannot be as always, uh, but there has to be an awakening uh, to the reality. Uh, I have to have a desire to consume. this moment of time may I say to you these are not just mere words but these are words that I want you to grab a hold of greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world let us no longer give place to fear but let us stand in his truth May I remind us of this truth in closing today. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and you will find me. And you shall search for me and you with all of your heart and I will be found of you, saith the Lord but don't miss this part in the middle of it. And I will turn away your captivity. I sincerely believe this, Brother Larry, today, that if a man or a woman will begin to d release the arrows in the face of the opposition that's pursuing them, that there is a release of the captivity of this hour. You and I today Please hear me. You and I today find ourselves in a very important moment in history. It has nothing to do with the election, so to speak. It's much bigger than that. We are seeing throughout the Middle East all kinds of behavior. We're seeing biblical things that have been prophetically spoken began to be repositioned and repositioned in an accelerated manner. And we know what it's all leading up to. However, let us not be so distracted by all of the things that's going on in our world that we fail to realize that we're commissioned to do one thing, and that is this. We are commissioned to release the arrows that's in our quiver. See, it isn't about whether you're ministering here at home or whether you're ministering abroad or wherever you call home. What matters is that you understand that, you know, there's a, there's a force of darkness that would love to gain entry. And he will gain entry unless someone gains the authority over him. And the only way you can do that is by the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And it does not affect him. Unless, first of all, it is connected with the faith of men in the hour and in the moment of history. And they began to release that word and say, no matter what I see, no matter what I hear, I'm staying. And I'm staying connected to the word. Notice with me. Today, and I don't say this in a derogatory manner self-righteous manner but it's probably safe to say this today that in the spiritual realm when the enemy looks at your house he don't see no arrows if he's not careful what he sees is nothing more than a welcome mat that says I can go there there's really no standard to keep me from being there. 
Because can I tell you today, wonderful time as I had this week with some great men and women of God, I was also disturbed by some of the things I saw. I'm just me. You don't have to like it. You don't even have to agree with it. But I have a problem. When I walk by, when I walk by a bar at a resort and I see pastors sitting there drinking, I have a problem with that. Because they haven't released an arrow of the Lord's deliverance and they're still bound by the things of this world. I have a problem. I take an evening stroll. I know I'm just send all the hate mail you want to. That's fine. I have a problem. When I want to go for a walk after a long day, Brother Larry, I take a little walk and I find a little, little sitting area where everybody can relax. But I walk around and I see pastors, ministry leaders, Sucking on big old cigars. Listen, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You do what you want to do. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord has a lot of things. But the devil has a lot of things too. And if you think you have to have something to go along with your Jesus, to get you through the day, get you through the week, I don't care what it is. It becomes dangerous. And those are avenues that the enemy says, that's a welcome mat. I can get into their life through those things. And he sees those things instead of the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Listen, when he looks at my house, this is what I want him to see. Let's see if we can do this. I want him, they'll just lay there then. I want him to see so many arrows and he says, listen, I can't go there because he has, he has obviously surrendered and dedicated himself to the word that God has given him. And therefore, what this begins to tell the enemy is this. You know what? If I'm going to go after him in this way, then he's willing to die on that hill. I'm here to tell you today, if I don't ever preach another message, that's all right. But I'm going to die on this hill. You wonder why darkness is everywhere. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. But we don't want to live holy. We want to get comfortable with sin. I'm not at a list of do's and don'ts preacher. I'm here to tell you this is a lamp into your feet and a light into your path. And if you allow it to lead you and guide you, you will live above reproach and the world will know who you are. You will not have to give a recognition of this is who I am and that's what I do. You won't get hung up on titles. You won't get hung up on position, but you'll walk with humility. You'll walk with love. You'll walk with compassion. And one of the things that scares the enemy more than anything is when he looks at a man or a woman that is filled with love and compassion and sincerity towards the heart of the people of God. And he says, I can't attack there. I want to tell you something today. This is a day of self-examining and asking the, and asking the hard question. When the Lord looks at my house, when he looks at my life, does he see any arrows? Do I have a desire to consume the enemy? As they come to the music today, this morning, I pray that we become so unsettled by the reports that we hear today that it will move us to action. Right now, in the midst of the acceleration of evil, in the midst of 
gross darkness everywhere. There's never been a more urgent need in recent history for a man of God and a woman of God to begin to once again walk with the power of God. They used to sing a chorus simply said, this is my desire. May I be so bold today to ask the question, what's your desire? I'm not against having aspirations. I'm not against having a five-year plan. I want everybody to succeed and be successful. I want you to make more money in 2025 than you've ever made in your life. I want you to drive a nicer car than you've ever driven. I want you to have nicer shoes, nicer clothes. I, I want your children to have more. I'm all for all of that. I have, no th- I have nothing against that. But what's your desire? If that's just your desire, then it's got to be more. My desire is for there to be a harvest of souls. My desire is for my children, my grandchildren to get under the water spout of the Holy Spirit and to be saturated in such a manner that they walk differently, that they talk differently, that they don't try to make it on great grandpa's or grandpa's anointing, but they they walk in their own anointing. But I have to be honest with you today, the enemy is bombarding them continually because there's no arrows but if you would dare to believe God's word and say I'm going to take that word and I'm going to join it with the measure of faith that he's given me and I'm going to strike it in the direction of the enemy and I'm going to let him know not today as long as there's breath in this body not happening here thirty last night I believe it was eight o'clock last night came back home from running around I said I gotta go to the office I'll be there for a while little Jackson said I gotta go to the office too mommy I can't go with you I have to go to the office little Jackson came and stayed with me till about 9 30 last night and him was in the office him sitting at his desk who knows what he typed but in his mind he is typing something with his Bibles listen he's just an ordinary kid that's getting more spoiled by everybody every day but me and he can have an attitude he's just a kid some days he acts like his mama we can't help that but he's just a kid he's just a kid But in the midst of just being a kid, I pray that I've got enough arrows in front of the enemy. For him and the other two over here. Where they don't experience darkness, but they experience the prophetic word of God in such a manner that they become mighty men, mighty women for the kingdom. Do you realize today in your arsenal right now where you're sitting in the midst of whatever you're faced with, you have the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. But the question is, what are you going to do with it this morning? A preacher's not going to set you free. Another meeting's not going to set you free. Another anointed song is not the answer. But you got to choose to do something with this. Will you put it in your bow today? And will you fire it towards the enemy? 
and say, I'm going to stand with my God. And I am going to believe his word for my life and for my family. And I will not allow darkness to live here. But I will only allow the things of God to live and reign in my house, in my life, and with my family. As we stand all over the house this morning. The Lord's arrow of deliverance. Joe Ash, I want you to understand. I'm even going to show you how to do it. He said, you just put that arrow with your faith, and then you release it. He showed him how to do it, and he did it three other times. But then he didn't have a desire to continue. I've tried to show you today that he's still the answer. And if you'll attach it to the measure of faith that's inside of you, you can defeat that dark thing in front of you no matter what it is. No matter what that battle is in your life right now, you can defeat it. But you got to have a desire to consume it. A lot of people will get delivered today and they find themselves back in bondage on Thursday. It's because they didn't shoot enough arrows. They didn't have the desire to consume the thing. They just had a desire to push it back. I'm not talking about pushing back something. I'm talking about absolutely getting set free from it. That self-worth issue, you can get free from it. That inadequate, you can get free from it. That depression, don't just push it back. You can get free from it. You know those lies of the enemy that said you never would, you never could, you never will? I'm not talking about just pushing it back. I'm talking about getting completely delivered from it. You know that lie that the team said, well, you can go three days without a drink, but you'll never. Listen, no, I'm talking about being completely, utterly set free. I recently talked with a man that was an alcoholic. He had to have it every day to function. But when he laid down at the altar... He gave himself to the Lord. The Lord said, will you give it to me? And he gave it to him. And he said, when I got up, he said, I was not a recovering alcoholic. He said, I was born again. I was totally set free. I've never had a desire for a taste of it again. You know why? It's because he chose not to just shoot an arrow. He chose to shoot all of his arrows. Listen. It's not about what this says. But it is about what this says. He says, you can overcome. And I come to tell you, you can and you will. But you got to take his arrow and you got to put it in faith. And when you do that, you don't have to have all the answers. You just have to say, God, I'm trusting you. I don't know how it all is going to end, but I'm trusting you. So today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to shoot some arrows today. Not literally. I don't care if you may have fallen down this week. Maybe you had a setback. Maybe the enemy came back in again. And now you're filled with guilt. I don't know. I don't know what your week was. Here's what I do know though. The Lord says, I'm giving you prophetic instructions. Maybe your arrow of deliverance isn't for the Syrians. But whatever that thing is, put put that name there and say, you know what, today, today I'm taking victory over that in my life. I'm going to walk in power. I'm going to walk in the authority that God says I can have. And I'm going to experience him. Today, simple message. But if it's ministered to you as they begin to sing, I'm going to give you an invitation to come. You'd say, I, I, I need some relief. I need some direction, some guidance in my life. I need to get beyond where I am.
today. Would you come? Maybe the first time you've been in this house. Maybe you're here every time the doors open. Doesn't matter. But will you let the Lord just heal you, deliver you, cleanse you, encourage you today? Maybe you've been in the fight of your life this week. I don't know. But can I tell you? Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Will you shoot that arrow of deliverance today and say, you know what? I'm going to go with God. I'm going to trust him. I'm just going to call you to a place of prayer this morning. Come pray with those that have came if you'd like. But if you, need it, if you have a need today, I want you to come as they minister in song. God bless you today. Everybody, we want to say thank you for watching today. We pray that this message blessed you. And if it did, please feel free to subscribe. Stay up to date with what we're doing here, as well as follow us on our other social media platforms. Help us reach more people across this world for Christ. We love you all. We pray that you have a blessed day. And we pray that we see you again soon. God bless.